Josh Jacobs, True Beast Mode 2.0. I'm loving it. Even when you feel low, you can still go. Even when you feel slow, you can still go. The other team's quarterback must go down. And he must go down hard. And like we always do, we start on the defensive side of the ball first for the Raiders. And I'm going to go over my four keys to the game. The first two are on the defensive side of the ball. Let's get to this first one right here. And that's slowing down Kenneth Walker here. And I was not so much concerned about the running game as much as catching the passes in the flat. And I had a goal. I wanted less than 125 combined rushing and receiving yards and no touchdowns. So how do we do with that? We actually only gave up 92 combined yards. And that includes Travis Homer, the backup but we did give up three touchdowns two to walker one to homer and i'm gonna give this a c minus now i think we did a pretty good job with that but i couldn't really give it a c or an above grade because of those three touchdowns in general we've been doing pretty well against the run for the most part overall we're doing what we need to do to slow them down we're still having problems in the flat with that kind of breaking our back with that especially in the second half and we'll get to more of that when we do the overall defensive grade but i want to get to the second key to the game and that of course is kind of slowing down geno smith now if you don't know geno smith's been kind of a journeyman cornerback he is having a career year coming into this game 17 touchdowns and only four interceptions, very efficient with the ball. And I said what we need to do as far as a goal is to have it get at least one turnover from this guy. My benchmark of under 50% on third down conversions and no red zone touchdowns because Seattle has had a hard time scoring in the red zone. We actually had two turnovers. One was an interception. Denzel Perryman kind of being in the right place at the right time. It looked like their receivers kind of bumped each other through the timing off. But you know what? A, a pick is a pick. So I'm taking it. And then the other one was a flubbed handoff. I'll give that one on Geno Smith. And Chandler Jones kind of finally doing something. Actually kind of fell on the ball there. Got that fumble recovery. Then went three of nine on third down conversions, which is actually good. Red zone touchdowns was three. We talked about those three on the running side. Overall, I'm going to give this grade a B minus because we don't get a whole lot of turnovers. So getting two in a game is pretty awesome for us as far as the defense so i'm gonna get to the overall grade for the defense i know we only we gave up 372 total yards 22 first downs 34 points kind of sounds like a lot but seattle is one of the best teams as far as overall scoring i think they were averaging about 27 points coming into this game i know we got three sacks we got the two turnovers but we did give up all those points I know Max Crosby, as usual, one and a half sacks, six quarterback hits. We we got one and a half sacks from the interior defensive line between Billings and Bilal Nichols. So well done with that. But I, overall, I'm going to say this is an average overall score for the defense. I think so in the running game. And the front four did a pretty good job. I think the secondary looked lost out, out there at times. Rocky Sin got burnt a number of times, including that touchdown to Tyler Lockett. So I think overall, it kind of, it's kind of a wash. And I give the defense an overall grade of a C. Now, I'd be remiss without going through this. Now, this happened late in the game. It was tied 34-34. Seattle had the ball. They were trying to drive to at least get a field goal here to try to probably try to win the game. DK Metcalf on the side over here catching the ball. It was actually ruled not a catch. He did not have control. A lot of people in the internet saying that Seattle quote-unquote got screwed. I think that's a bunch of bullshit. If you look at this, I don't think the ball hit the ground, but when he is rolling, you can tell he does not have control of the ball. It's kind of moving down. He does not have his hands on it. He has it kind of pinned below his arm and trying to hold it with his torso. It is not in control. He is rolling out of bounds on his butt. That is not a catch. I think that was a good call. I think a lot of people whined about that. And besides, I mean, the refs didn't give Josh Jacobs 300 yards. I hear everyone say it. Take what they give you. We're going to take what we want. I want to get to my first key to the game. And of course, that was getting Josh Jacobs going. But when we did our game preview on Friday, Josh Jacobs came up out of nowhere on the injury report listed as questionable with a calf injury. I was not so sure if he'd even play. I was looking combined at least 120 rushing yards, one rushing touchdown, eight rushing first downs because Seattle's run defense is terrible. And of course, this is the total combined 273 rushing yards, two rushing touchdowns, 13 rushing first downs. Josh Jacobs himself got 229 of those 273. And of course, what am I going to give this? I got to give this an A+. Outstanding. I know Seattle's run defense sucks anyway, but... 
Josh Jacobs showing himself to be an absolute beast out there. A little contribution from Amir Abdullah and of course Amir White, but still he he carried the brunt of the load. Now my second key to the game, of course, was Foster Moreau. You know I am not a big fan of Foster Moreau. I was looking for about 75 receiving yards and one receiving touchdown because Seattle is pretty terrible against the tight end as well, giving up about an average of 70 yards to the position. What he actually got was 33 receiving yards and one touchdown. I'm going to give this a C minus. I'm going to tell you why. One of the interceptions bounced right through his hands. He should have caught that ball. There was another blatant drop in the middle of the field that he should have had. And even the touchdown he got was not very impressive. What was impressive was Derek Carr rolling out and putting it right in his bread basket. Overall, the offense had 576 total yards, 27 first downs, 40 points. They were 8 of 14 on third down conversions. You know I want to get over 50% and they were. Highest I can go here is a B plus because of the two turnovers early. I think the D I think the team is actually gelling as a team more because the offense sputtered, of course. I give the first interception to Derek Carr. It was a little it was an off-target one. He was trying to get to Devontae Adams. Uh, Diggs made a great play. Second one, I'm going to give to Moreau. But regardless, they started out with two early turnovers. And they put the defense in a bad position. One of which was already starting in the red zone. But the defense kind of held up. Kind of kept them in the game. Kept this from being a blowout. And then the offense got going. And again, I, I can't give it an A because of those two turnovers. And of course, I got to mention this guy. This is my thumbnail guy, Mr. 300 here. He had 303 total yards. It's unbelievable. The game this guy had broke the Raider franchise record for rushing yards. Had over 70 yards in the receiving game as well. When you have great coaches, then after you have great coaches, you get great players. You have a great organization. And you tell them one thing, just win, baby.